Hi guys and welcome to Moto Scotty. In this video I'm going to take care of our Opel Astra the H generation which is uh, comparable to Vauxhall Astra H or I think even in America you have the Saturn Astra. Anyway it's all GM similar product with the 1.6 liter Ecotec and what I have on the program today or in this video or in the next several videos is basically to do a full service but also exchange uh, shock absorbers, the clutch and also the uh, rear main seal. So this is the beast. It's a 2009 Opel Astra, 1.6 liter, no turbo, Ecotec. It's a very reliable car. It doesn't have really much power, nor does it have any torque at all. But it's the four door or five door, depending on how you want to see it. Hatch, 140,000 kilometers. And I changed the oil every 10,000 kilometers because this car does a lot of short distance journeys. And uh, it has 140,000 now. I need to change the oil, all the filters. And because it does have a small leak at the rear main seal, so between the engine and the gearbox, uh, I want to take care of this too. I've been dreading to do this because it's, well, it involves a lot of work that I've never done. And uh, it's not really the best place to do this at home without a lift, but I'm still going to try it. And since I'm at it, I'm also going to change the shock absorbers, rear, front, uh, obviously all the filters, the oil, the oil filter, the clutch, the rear main seal, which is tiny in here, and all the accessories which go into the clutch gear, into the clutch, clutch assembly, gear oil, uh, strap mounts for the, obviously the, the struts in the front. And then, luckily, I invested in a my first uh, impact gun, electric, which should hopefully help me tackle any job, especially since I'm planning on continuing working on cars, be it this one, the motorcycle, or my Firebird. I've already done quite some work on this car. I mean, there were some Olixis engines. I mean, it's now over 10 years old. The uh, valve cover gasket, it was leaking oil, the oil cooler was leaking oil, I've already changed that, but I haven't really made videos about it because technically you can already find loads of videos about this car on YouTube. Uh, I've changed the brakes completely about 30,000 kilometers ago, but it's a very reliable and inexpensive car, so we want to keep it going. And it has no rust, it has scratches. So let's start easy and change out the rear shock absorbers first. And these are 17. That's not good. Throwing the wheel under the car, so it gives me an insurance. That's what it is. Okay, let's see. It's 50 millimeter on top and 16 on the bottom. Now it's coming. It's moving. It just shows. That. Just do things by hand. Ooh, it's in. Okay. been in there probably since it's been built since 2009 so that makes almost 
13 years now. Let's try. This way. Yeah. Yes. Up with the old. And what did they say? In with the new. Just to make sure no dirt goes into the thread. Bring it in top. Also hope that it's the right shock, shock absorber. That seems to be working out just fine so far. And then, bring it up here a bit, let's see. I'm gonna basically just lift the uh, rear axle with another uh, lift or another jack find the jack point somewhere here lift it up a little bit so i can slide in the bolt just needs a little bit that should be enough slide in the bolt it's pretty much straight in i mean there's not much else i can do Instead of just trying, I think it's in now. That magnet is in that gun again. No. Not getting there too hard. Tighten it up. Same at the bottom. I actually have no idea how much torque I need to apply on these, but I'm just tightening them down quite good. That's all done here. I can uh, mount the wheel back on again and then do the other side. Also, just to test the old shock absorber, compressing it quite easily, and it's barely coming out again. So, it's way overdue to. Change those shock absorbers. Alrighty, so the rear shock absorbers are all installed. Here are the old ones, obviously I compressed them. There's not much power left in those, so it was a good good call to change them. And now uh, I can address the front ones, which are a little bit more tricky. As you can see, the springs are on top of the struts, so I'm gonna need to compress them. I have this uh, spring compressor here. Hopefully this will work, because this is a spring compressor I originally bought for my Firebird which didn't work out because the fiber needs an uh, inside, uh, like an inner spring compressor, and here I can use those outer spring compressors. So I basically need to take off the wheel, take off the car, take off the wheel, then uh, disconnect all the brake line uh, things and anything that's attached to the shock absorber, and detach the shock absorber from top here, basically, these just need to be clipped out as out made of plastic and uh, yeah, I hope they won't break because I don't have replacements for them. And the whole assembly comes out with the uh, strut mounts here. So I have new ones of the, those also. And uh, yeah, 
just take it from there, obviously. It's always the same when you do things the first time, it takes you more time. unbolt this element here then all the brake line the one so the ABS connector brake line here everything is bolt on this is basically just clipped in this is clipped in and then we have uh, that one I already mentioned it also looks like it's slightly leaking so I don't expect this shock absorber to be any good anymore then remove those two bolts then this connector here, basically this clip, this plastic clip, and then I should be able to remove the whole assembly from the bottom. Actually, before I'm gonna go any further, I'm gonna put some WD-40 on those three bolts. So while I'm taking out everything else here on the side, uh, I can let this go through into the bolts. Now for the brake line clip. Oh, see this goes in like so, has this edge here, remember what way it goes in, okay. no. take it off, and for the ABS sensor, just get a screwdriver here, unblock it, and take it off, basically just push it in and lift it up gently, it's all plastic we don't want to break anything see how it's clipped in here also onto the held onto the brake line and now we can take see if we can loosen up these and these here are all 18 millimeters so make sure you actually do have an 18 millimeter in your in your socket uh, in your socket sack because oftentimes I mean at least here in Europe uh, when you get a metric set you have uh, 13 14 15 16 and 17 and 19 and and uh, and so on 21 22 but no 18 so i had to buy this 18 millimeter separately so make sure you have that before you actually just go ahead and think take everything apart let's see is this 18 as well it is give it a go stand corrected actually there is a nut here in the back so you can counter hold this one and then now it should just be see it's coming off easily 18 in front and the 17 in the back and then you're able to just disassemble Get off. maybe also to release the pressure on the hole Installation, I'm going to take a second jack and also lift up the, the A-arm slightly so I can remove all these elements a bit more easily. Now here on top is what I'm... I want you to be very careful with because you have to loosen up these containers. You might just need... I don't want to damage the plastic. And yet I have to get in and open these up. Okay, so that worked, that side.
have to prod him open, but I also want to be able to use him again. That's fine. I might just tap out the bolts. On the air, it should release pressure on the whole system. That was the trick. This shouldn't be under pressure anymore once you want to remove the bolts. They should pretty much come out effortlessly. That's one. You can wait a bit already. Just make sure I don't damage the ABS sensor cable or the brake line. Yeah, pull that out. And now I should be able to remove the whole strut. I don't know if it's coming off already. That's it. I'm going to continue on the bench. Here we go. So before I take everything apart, part i just want to make sure that uh, the new strut i got is actually identical to the the old one so it has all the same shape and uh, attachments here for the brake line and the abs sensor this appears to be the same has a new uh, washer and nut so i'm going to use this uh, spring compressor to compress the spring loosen up the bolt on top take everything apart Put the same spring, obviously, and the boot and uh, everything onto the new shock absorber. Put it back in the car. And then I'm going to remove the dust cap here. Interesting thing is that the old one has a uh, star shaped uh, bolt in here. Whereas the new one. As far as I know, it's a six millimeter inside, so I'm gonna have to use a let me see what wrench. Just realized that I need one of these 22 to go in, which I don't. If you take it apart, it's not that bad because you can use the impact gun and just use the 22 millimeter impact gun socket here and then get it out. And, but in order to put it all back together, it would be a bad decision to just impact it back down just to because you might damage the new shock absorber. So I prefer to have a 22, or I would advise to have a 22 millimeter uh, wrench that has this uh, deep neck. So it can go in, in here, and at the same time insert the six millimeter uh, Allen key and tighten everything back down. So I guess I'm just going to have to buy one. However, in the meantime, I can still test my uh, spring compressors. Right in here. Here I've started setting up my uh, spring compressor. Obviously, if you have a big one like a bench where you can just start like a big clamp that com comes in from one side and can hold the whole spring better. I would recommend that, but uh, I'm going to try and do it with this one. I'm going to have to basically increase the tension one side after the other and make sure that it works. Try and get it out with the impact gun. Oh, this always keeps happening, it stops working. Man. 
don't. And the whole spring section here. Basically. Like this. Now I basically need to take off this spring here. This clip. Push down. Let it release and just as with the rear ones, I'm just gonna push them down a couple of times before I install them. All right, Put this bumper stop in. Clean. Flat side has to be on top. Keeping the new strap mount ready. Now this can go. Clean up the spring here on the bottom. This is where it mounts onto the new. Shock absorber. The old one. To be honest, I don't really know if, if it was worth or if it is worth to change the strap down, but it definitely can't hurt. Put this back in here. Now basically. on at the end. Now I just need to index. What's really important is to index the spring properly. It has to go into here and block up here. The boot has to go over everything. Put the bumper stuff here in, in here. Like so. New strap mount. Since I'm impatient, I'm still going to use the impact gun just to tighten it up a bit. I also don't have to leave the spring compressors on all the time now. I can just remove them and then by the time I get the tool, or the time it takes me to take the tool, I don't have to leave the spring compressor on all the time. I don't really want to do that. to tighten this up properly with the right tool. Well, it is the next day and I actually went ahead yesterday and uh, got the 22 millimeter wrench with uh, this end here to get in here. <laughs> but as you can see, even the ring here is too large to get properly in and grab the nut and use the six millimeter Allen key to get inside and hold this. So I thought, well, I need to get this mounted. So I just went ahead and took the impact gun. And well, and that's fine by me. I might have a slightly larger diameter, but let's see. All set and ready to go back in. Let's get it in here. To the top.
past this. It's in here. Let's put that bulb in. Clip in all the bright colors. This goes back in here. I clip in behind the bracket. And get your gloves stuck in there. You can use a little rubber hammer. Put the clip back in. Clip in your. See, this happens when you know what you're doing because the ABS sensor needs to be in behind this bracket. So I'm going to take this out again. And the ABS sensor or not. Now you have me in doubt. Cable of the ABS sensor goes behind the bracket, and then you can put in the brake hose, clip in the, the uh, clip to hold the bracket, bra uh, the brake hose in place. That's it. Now we just have to tighten everything up. Good now. Now I just need to clip in the top one, the top section. When you push up the strut up into the strut tower, make sure that it goes really through the middle and it doesn't touch uh, the outer rim. But you would notice because you wouldn't be able to put everything back together if this didn't get up, if this didn't go through completely and properly. And now it's still the jack from underneath the control arm holding this up. I can put these clamps back in. And when you do, make sure that these rings, they are on top, not like so, but on top. Maybe I have to jack it up a little bit more. Eventually I realized that I need to put more pressure on the strut on the shock absorber to mount the upper clip in to push the strut or the shock absorber properly through the strut tower so I could put the plastic, plastic clips in. So what I did is actually just uh, put the wheels on and put the car on the wheels so that the whole weight of the car would be on it, on the system and I could properly fit in the clip. So in hindsight, I realized that the whole drama about these strut down clips here was unnecessary because now that everything, the whole weight is completely on those struts, you can see there is a bit of play. So they clip, would have clipped in just normally. You can see on the passenger side, 
it's still the original strut mount and strut. And you can see there's some play as well. So this is totally normal. So what I'm gonna do for the passenger side is that basically now I know that I can just bolt it all up completely from the bottom, put it in, put the whole weight on it, and then clip these in at the end. Now, once you're all done and dusted, the car is back together. You can go back on the road, but there's something that I missed in the beginning is to disconnect the battery because since I've touched on the ABS sensors, even though I just clipped them out of their place on the strut, now that I switch on the car, start it up, and you can see that the ABS light and the uh, ESP or whatever that's for is still on. And that's because I didn't disconnect the battery from the get-go before I started to tackle the struts. So what you should do to avoid this is to disconnect the battery first. But now if you don't have a diagnostics reader, now hang on a minute, a diagnostics tool is not the solution to this issue here because what actually did happen here is why did the ABS and the ESP light come up in the first place? It's because I probably didn't reconnect or did, probably didn't yeah, reconnect the ABS sensors on either side or one of the sides uh, properly. What I would recommend you to do is to go back behind the wheel, maybe you just have to turn the wheel, you don't even have to take it apart and check the connectors on either side and then you should be fine. I did that, I checked it, that the connectors were plugged in properly, started the car, and now it's gone. So it might be that the light doesn't come off right away, but yet you might have to drive a couple of hundred meters before it, the whole system recognizes that the connectors are plugged in properly, and then you should be fine. You don't need a diagnostics reader to delete a code that's uh, actually not here anymore. Anyhow, that's it for the shock absorbers. Thank you very much for watching. I hope it was helpful. Please leave a comment in the comment section and hit the like button. Maybe consider subscribing because the next episode will be about changing the clutch assembly on this car and the rear main seal. And after that, the service. So if the video does appear, that means that I've succeeded. If it doesn't, well, then I haven't and I've uh, had some someone else do it. Thanks for watching and see you next time.